Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's that time again. My bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. We're almost done with the book and I can finally say all of that without looking. <laughs> Today's stories are Teddy Koala Bear's Secret by Margaret Connor and Cheeky Learns a Lesson by Rosemary Garland. Yay! More stories! Woohoo! <laughs> also, more wonderful art. Teddy Koala Bear lived in England with Betty. He wasn't English. He was an Australian bear. Betty thought he was just her toy bear. She didn't know that when she went to sleep at night, he woke up and became a real koala bear. Or that he sometimes went back home to visit his friends in Australia. But that's what he did. You see, he'd found an easy and quick way to get there. He'd found a secret tunnel which went straight through the center of the earth from England to Australia on the other side of the world. And while other people were busy traveling all around the world by boat or plane to get to Australia, Teddy Koala Bear simply climbed into Betty's toy car and whizzed through the secret tunnel. He was always back before Betty woke up the next morning. It was rather lucky that the entrance to the tunnel should be in Betty's garden. Teddy Koala Bear found it exciting whizzing along through the tunnel with the car lights flashing on the walls as he drove along. He always wore a saucepan on his head. He called this his crash helmet because it made him feel like a real racing driver. One morning when he came out of the tunnel in Australia, it was morning there of course, he met his old friend Candy Kangaroo, yes spelled with a K. She told him her tummy felt empty. Haven't you had any breakfast? He asked her. Oh, it's not that, she sighed. It's because I'm used to my Joey sitting in my pouch, but now he's grown a big boy and doesn't want to ride in it anymore, and I feel strange without him. Well, you can give me a ride in your pouch, said Teddy Koala Bear. But oh dear, he was glad to get out of it again. When Candy sprang up in the air and down again, it made him feel dizzy. He was glad when she said, here's Platypus. Teddy Koala Bear climbed out quickly. Hello, Platypus, he cried. Have you decided what sort of animal you are yet? No, sighed Platypus. I feel as mixed up as I ever did. Sometimes I feel like a duck. That's when I lay my eggs. Besides, I have sort of a duck's bill. Then other times I feel like a mole. That's when I start burrowing. And then again, I often wonder if I could be a beaver, because I'm told my tail is like a beaver's, though I must say I've never seen a beaver. Poor platypus, said Teddy Koala Bear. It's not funny to be such a mixed up sort of animal as you. But the kookaburra bird up in the blue gum tree thought it was funny. Anyway, he started to laugh. And when a kookaburra bird starts to laugh, he never seems to stop until he has everyone else laughing too. Even platypus was laughing in the end. Stop it, kooky! cried Teddy Koala Bear, but he was still laughing when they all came to wave Teddy Koala Bear goodbye in the tunnel, and he laughed all the way back to England. He must have fallen asleep laughing, because when Betty woke up and saw him, she said, look at Teddy Koala Bear. I believe he's laughing in his sleep. You can definitely tell the times because of the platypus. We know so much more about the platypus now. It's a wonderful creature. Also reminds me of a Robin Williams joke where, yeah, the platypus. The one I only can tell that was designed by committee. But the art's kind of fun and the koala bear looks nothing like a koala bear. He looks more like a standard bear. Especially with the way he stands, stuff like that. Also, I was wondering about the picture with the koala bear in the ruse pocket. Because it was like, that's such an odd image. Did he ask his friend for a ride or what? <laughs> also, having a tunnel through the center of the earth has a lot of problems with it, scientifically speaking. Not just the fact of how would you do that, but what would happen on the way through the tunnel, even if you were to get rid of the heat problem. There would be no air in the center. Actually, after a couple of miles, there wouldn't be any air in the tunnel. Also, gravity. Funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fun little image, though. You have England at the top with night and a tree where the tunnel actually starts. And him driving his little car down the center there. If you don't look at the very bottom of the picture, it almost looks like he's driving the car down a road. 
is it until you look at the bottom that you're like, oh, now I get it. He's driving through the center of the earth. I actually didn't even think that it was a tunnel at first at all, even when I saw the bottom. I thought it was just a road and they were emphasizing it. And then, oh, it's a tunnel. When I heard that part of the story, I was like, how is he going to drive to Australia? I mean, really, there's a whole ocean. We don't have a land bridge big enough. Ah, but the art's fun, very colorful, kind of watercolory again. I mean, the technique is very reminiscent of watercolor with how some of the colors blend and stuff like that and are lighter in certain areas. Very nice. I normally don't nitpick the art, but that is not even remotely a koala bear. And the, the kangaroo and the platypus, you can very clearly see what they are. I don't have a good mental image of a kookaburra bird, so that could go either way. That's very accurate, actually. Okay, so we got everyone except our main protagonist. Yeah. But what do you think about the story? Cute. Oh, yes, it's very cute. You know, another one in this book where, you know, toys come to life and do stuff. Though, I think the way this one's set up, it's, I think this is what the little girl dreams her koala does. Especially with the line at the end of the girl girl, oh, it looks like he's laughing in his sleep. If she thought this all up, of course she'd say that. Because there are several stories where it's like, hmm, is this actually the child telling the story? Like Elizabeth's Magic Rocking Horse or the Cowslip Key. Hmm, that was a very good one when it comes to like, real, fake, real? And which part's fake and which part's real? Moving on. Cheeky learns a lesson. Hmm. Let's not be too cheeky with this story. <sighs> Tammy had a little puppy called Cheeky. And Tammy knew that when you have a puppy, you must train him to behave properly, especially on the roads. Tammy had learned his road rules well a long time ago. And now it was Cheeky's turn to learn. And Tammy had to teach him. So, first he taught Cheeky how to walk properly on the leash. Then he showed Cheeky that you only cross the road at the pedestrian crossing. Cheeky was quick to learn this. He also had to wait and look both ways before crossing. Cheeky was very good about that. He sat and looked up at his master and waited until Tammy told him that it was quite safe to cross the road. Cheeky had to learn. It was a lesson which lots of people forget to teach little boys as well as little puppies. But Tammy knew. It was that you should only get out of a car on the pavement side. Cheeky took such a long time to learn this. But Tammy never, never let Cheeky off the leash when he was in the car. So Cheeky was quite safe with Tammy. But there was one lesson Tammy did not teach Cheeky. And that was because no one had ever taught Tammy. One day, Tammy and Cheeky were walking along the pavement when Peter from across the road called out. Hi, Tammy, shouted Peter from across the road. How's your puppy? Then he started to call the puppy. Cheeky, come on, Cheeky. Cheeky jerked the leash out of Tammy's hand and pounded across the road. Just at that moment, a policeman on a bicycle was coming down the road. He missed Cheeky, but one wheel ran over the leash, which was trailing behind the puppy. The policeman wobbled off his bicycle. He put out his big arm and just stopped Tammy from running right across the road in front of the bicycle, too. My, my, you haven't learned your road rules, young man, said the policeman. That was a silly thing to do. I was trying to save my puppy from being run over, said Tammy. But why was your puppy running across the road, asked the policeman. Because I called him, said Peter across the road. Ah, said the policeman. So it was your fault, was it? You must never, never, never call a dog or a little child from across the road. Don't you see how silly it is? Yes, said Peter from across the road. I never thought how dangerous it was either, said Tammy. Well, you were lucky. None of us was hurt, said the policeman. There's a road safety exhibition at the police station, especially for youngsters like you. Ask your mother if you may go. You'll see a lot of interesting things. Tammy and Peter from across the road and Cheeky went to the police station. They saw all sorts of pictures of road signs and posters about road safety. The policeman gave them each a big poster to take home and pin on the wall. And Cheeky had a special little picture of a puppy learning road rules, which Tammy pinned up near his basket. Well, this was a very direct story. This may as well have been a PSA at the end of an 80s cartoon. 
Yeah, that is a very good comparison. I was thinking more like a video you would see in a classroom. You know, the kind of like old black and white ones that you don't, there's actually no audio with it. And it's just text on a screen. But, you know, these are short stories. So it kind of fits in with, you know, the PSAs they used to do to get the uh, content counted as educational to meet the broadcast percentage. You mean like the stuff at the end of Sailor Moon? Also, there's a great pro Jared video about that. Go watch it, please. <laughs> but now under the art. This is more of the realistic style. It's very nicely done, and both boys look well rendered. And I don't remember hearing about... I must have, like, blanked out when you were reading that part a little bit, because I don't remember hearing that the police officer fell over. Uh, it doesn't say fell over. It says the policeman wobbled off his bicycle. That does not match. It's clearly that he fell off. I wonder if there was some editing that happened between the drawing being finished and the text. Could be. Yeah, because that poor guy is, like, laying there at this... All you can see is his legs, by the way, in the drawing. His legs are up on top of his bike. He looks like he's like, ooh. When I was looking at that picture, and the moment we got to a policeman, I was like, ooh, 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 poor kids. Ooh, policeman. So, I don't see anything really wrong with art. With it. We're actually back to the two-color artist, and this time it's yellow. Or I should say we're back to yellow, because there were some other drawings with yellow, too. And I didn't realize those were posters at first in that image, because, like, they look a little flat, but that one kind of has some dimensional to it. But that one's definitely flat. <laughs> yeah, but now that you've heard the story, that's a wall, and those are posters. Because there's a sign, and a bus, and then a crosswalk, and you can see the legs of a pedestrian in the front of a car. The car well back from the crosswalk. Also, road rules? That reminds me of a part here, like, it was kind of a bit of a tongue twister. Well, I have a little trouble with the word learnt, L-E-A-R-N-T, because that's not really in my common speaking vernacular. I would say learned, as in past tense, of the word learn. Oh, shall I move on to the poem I was on this page? <laughs> this art takes up an entire side of one page. If you count the exterior margin, I would say it almost takes up half the page. I was just about to say, it's about half the page. So this was one of the shorter short stories. Uncle Harry, always late, often has to run. The only way he'll catch his train is shot out of a gun. Uncle Harry has a dream of flying through the sky. But when he comes to Earth again, he sees his train flash by. <laughs> there seems to be a ringmaster and a circus cannon and someone flying out of it. Which, based on the words of the poem, would be Uncle Harry. I guess Uncle Harry's in a hairy situation. Yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't that bad of a pun, because Uncle Harry really isn't that hairy. Well, we can't tell, because he's, like, in a suit. All we can see is part of his face and his hands. And I think he's smiling. Yes, yes he is. Fun stories. So this has been another installment of My Bedtime Book of Two-Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were... Teddy Koala Bear's Secret by Margaret Connor and Cheeky Learns a Lesson by Rosemary Garland. So yes, the journey nears its end. For those of you who haven't been following along the entire time, this means that you can binge watch almost the entire book. And maybe one day we'll have a bedtime book of two minute stories cinematic universe. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. Uh, if you haven't picked up a copy of this book and would like to, check below for a link because the internet's not asking much to get this book. It's really about yard sale price. And then if you just feel like doing some shopping, the Ebates link is there because this is our podcast and I can. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you for listening.